hello dear students welcome to the class on corticosteroids part 4 so in this session we'll mainly concentrate on glucocorticoid actions coming to the specific learning objectives at the end of this session we should be able to explain the relationship between glucocorticoids with immune system what are all the glucocorticoids action on calcium metabolism on cardiovascular system on hematopoietic system and central nervous system as well as the other important miscellaneous effects let's move on to the what is the glucocorticoid action on immune response as we know that the immune response is made up of two types that is the t cell mediated response as well as the humoral response here the both the response will be suppressed that is there will be suppression of cell mediated immunity because of inhibition of the cytokine production and further it will reduce the t cell proliferation at the same time it also suppresses the humoral immunity thereby it diminishes both b cell production as well as the antibody synthesis apart from that the most important cytokine which is inhibited or reduced is the interleukin 2 because of the reduction in the interleukin 2 there will be less or few activated t lymphocyte cells and also these glucocorticoids will decrease the phagocytotic activity produced by macrophages so coming to the glucocorticoids on calcium metabolism basically it decreases the calcium levels in the body how it decreases the calcium absorption in the intestine thereby increasing the calcium excretion through the kidney the reason being the key point that one must remember is these glucocorticoids antagonize the vitamin d3 action so vitamin d3 function is to increase the absorption of calcium in the intestine so along with this there will be loss of calcium from the bone leading to bone resorption and also these glucocorticoids will amplify the parathyroid activity so parathyroid function parathyroid hormone function is to balance the calcium levels once there is a low calcium levels in the body it tries to extract the calcium from the bone leading to bone resorption finally leading to osteoporosis so there will be risk of osteoporosis if the glucocorticoids are used for prolonged duration of time next coming to the glucocorticoids on cardiovascular system so basically it has got two action direct action it directly stimulates the cardio cardiac output and it has got positive inotropic effect and it has got permissive action where it potentiate the pressor actions of catecholamines that is adrenaline and angiotensin 2 so in this permissive action it mainly enhances the receptors so it enhances the adrenergic receptors as well as the angiotensin receptors and also along with this it also retards the metabolism of catecholamines so thereby it increases the pressor actions of catecholamines so remember on prolonged use of the glucocorticoids can lead to hypertension coming to the glucocorticoids activity on hematopoietic system that is on the blood so basically it increases the rbc platelets and neutrophils whereas it decreases the lymphocytes eosinophils and basophils so there is one important question glucocorticoids why it is useful in lymphoma to know this answer please stay till the end so coming to the glucocorticoids action on cns other therapeutic doses it has got mild euphoric effect but if it is used for prolonged duration of time it can lead to insomnia anxiety depression and one should remember that if a patient is uh, prone for epilepsy or susceptible to epilepsy you should be very careful with glucocorticoids because the, the glucocorticoids will lower the 
seizure threshold particularly at higher doses thereby it can precipitate seizures and also rarely at larger doses it can increase the intracranial pressure so coming to the glucocorticoid action uh, which are very very important so one should remember that so normal amount of cortisol is required in our body to function the glomerular filtration so to normal functioning of the glomerular filtration we require a normal amount of cortisol and this glucocorticoids will also helps in fetal lung development by stimulating the surfactant production pulmonary surfactant production and at larger doses it can increase the risk of peptic ulcer due to the increase in pepsin and gastric acid secretion and it can also increase the renal excretion of uric acid apart from that it also inhibits the pulsatility of tsh hormone production and thereby it can also depress the thyrotropin releasing hormone it also depresses the growth hormone release and one very important point is it has got weak mineralocorticoid action so the glucocorticoids can uh, have a small or uh, some amount of salt and water retention that can create edema in the body so coming to the extra edge point which is very very important with respect to immune response the most common a cytokine production that is inhibited is interleukin 2 and why there is a decrease in b cell or the immoral immunity means b cell uh, on the b cell there is there will be less expression of the interleukin 2 as well as interleukin 2 receptors and especially with respect to phagocytosis activity uh, the reason for a decrease in phagocytotic activity is there will be down regulation of fc receptor expression on macrophages so coming to the, what is the role of glucocorticoids in controlling graft rejection so basically in uh, uh, graft rejection it reduces the antigen expression from the grafted tissue it delays the revascularization and it decreases the sensitization of cytotoxic t lymphocytes and next coming to why it is useful in lymphomas because it has got lympholytic activity lympholytic activity that means it decreases the lymphocyte cells especially on malignant lymphatic cells but on the normal lymphoid tissue it doesn't show any effect so you must be wondering how it helps in fetal lung development so basically the glucocorticoids in case of fetal lung maturation it plays a very important role by stimulating the pulmonary surfactant production so you can use beta methazone 12 mg intramuscularly every 24 hours for two doses or you can use dexamethasone 6 mg intramuscularly every 12 hours for four doses it should be administered to women who are having a definitive signs of premature labor and it should be administered between 26 to 30 weeks of gestation so coming to the key points to remember or take home message so with the glucocorticoids there will be suppression of cell mediated immunity as well as humoral immunity it antagonizes the vitamin d3 action thereby decreases calcium absorption and also it will lead to bone resorption leading to osteoporosis it has got permissive action where it leads to increase in the pressure action of the catecholamines and prolonged use of glucocorticoid can increase the risk of development of hypertension and also it can be used in case of uh, lymphomas because of its lympholytic property and it should be it should not be used in those patients who are more prone for seizures because it lowers the seizures threshold at higher doses and it helps in fetal lung development because it uh, uh, stimulates the pulmonary surfactant production or you can use the beta methazone or dexamethasone in case of uh, premature delivery and also at larger doses you should be very careful because it increases the risk of peptic ulcer formation 
and lastly it has got min uh, weak mineralocorticoid action where it can show the uh, retention of salt and water so this is my reference in the next video we'll see the mineralocorticoid action thank you if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel i love pharmacology for more updates on pharmacology thank you